Can computers see the future? Yes, sort of. In this video, we're talking about how the way that CPUs look into the future actually presented a memory corruption vulnerability that allows people to bypass a major feature of the ARM computer instruction set. This attack is one of those crazy ones, and I want to talk about this one so badly because any attack that uses a cache invalidation as a side channel to leak information about the CPU is already cool enough. Think about Spectre and Meltdown, right? Those bugs that broke the internet around 2016, 2017 time period. But on top of it being a bug in a cache invalidation, it is also speculative execution. And via this attack, they're able to break one of the major pieces of ARM's security architecture. Now, if you're new here, Hi, my name is Ed, this is A Level Learning, a channel where I make videos about cybersecurity, software security, and all kinds of other cool stuff. So if you like that, or just wanna hang out, hit that sub button, I really appreciate it. Also, yes, I got a haircut. It's, uh, it's a little long, a little something weird going on here. Okay, I do wanna give my hats off to the researchers here. All the people are named here in white. Please go take some time after this video, go read their paper, 18 pages of computer architecture goodness, binary exploitation goodness. In this video, I wanna make this paper a little more digestible for people who may not have as much experience with how CPU memory works, how binary exploitation works, and all that kind of stuff. So what is memory tagging? What are buffer overflows? What, what is all this stuff about? Well, to understand how this attack works, we have to start at the basics. Hackers like to exploit these things called memory corruption vulnerabilities. The basic one that everyone knows about is a buffer overflow, right? This paper here by LF1 called Smashing the Stack from Front and Profit, which is a paper within FRAC, the hacker e-zine from a million years ago, uh, talks about basically, hey, if we are able to write past the bounds of a buffer in C, we can use that to take control of the code by changing the return pointer. This guy, LF1, enumerates that if we are able to control the return address of a program by setting this value to a hacker-controlled value, we can put code in that location and run malicious code. This has been the basis of the majority of the hacks that have happened, over 70% of them since the 1990s. And this is the thing that companies are trying to prevent by either secure code or secure architecture. Now ARM, the chip architecture designer that licenses out the ARM spec, has added several features in ARM V8 and ARM V9, one of them being this idea of memory tagging. So memory tagging is the idea of, just like it sounds, putting a tag or a specific number at the end of a pointer. By putting that number there, you effectively make a, spe a special number that if it gets changed, the CPU will crash. At runtime, the the CPU checks that the pointer and the metadata tags on each load and store match. Now you're probably wondering, wait, aren't pointers memory addresses? Like how are they able to just put a random value in a pointer? Well, pointers actually aren't all that magic. They actually have a specific function that they do. When you look at a 64-bit pointer, for example, there are a few things that are happening on the inside of this pointer, but basically almost the entire pointer is a series of indexes into tables. This index into table system is known what is called virtual memory that allows a program to think that it has access to all the memory on the CPU. By translating these virtual memory addresses to a physical memory address via page tables, we're able to give a program the illusion that it has access to the entire memory map. Meanwhile, it doesn't actually, it's a specific memory address that get, gets mapped into a pointer. Now, the entire pointer isn't actually used. There are certain bits that are reserved for special purposes or that don't actually do anything in the pointer. And so ARM has taken advantage of these leftover bits and used them to do specific memory protection elements, one of them being memory tagging. Another example is the pointer authentication code where effectively the CPU will sign the pointer cryptographically and if you overflow it, you invalidated the signature and therefore the pointer is invalid. Also real quick, this video is sponsored sponsored by none other than me. If you want to learn to code in assembly or C or learn to do network code in C, please go check out my website, Low Level Academy. The courses are on sale right now for the summer. Go check it out. If you want to learn to code in the C language, you can get a free preview with the arrays lesson here. If you want to go learn to code in assembly, you can get a free lesson with the load operations lesson right here. Please go check them out. I honestly believe that if you want to be a better programmer, you got to learn the fundamentals. Where do you learn the fundamentals? C and assembly on Low Level Academy. 
back to the video, memory tagging stuff. And memory tagging in ARM also prevents against certain attacks like use after freeze, this place where you have data in a heap location, for example, you free it, but accidentally access it later. The way it works is actually pretty cool, and this graphic here does a really good job of explaining it. So we have this character pointer here that gets allocated 16 bytes. When we allocate it with 16 bytes using an MTE compliant allocator, like the one on Android, for example, we have what well, we can call this a particular color. Right now, the memory is blue. Now, what happens is we either can overflow this data or we can delete it, we can free it. And when we do that, we recolor the data to a different color. So this memory address now has a different tag. If we were to, in the future, use the old pointer, the use after free, but it still has that original tag, the blue color, this will throw a CPU exception. Now, the important part here is if the hacker is able to reveal the tag and put the tag back in place, this defeats the entire security of the system. The idea is that the memory tag, which is 16 bits, it hides in the first 16 bits of the pointer itself. If we are able to leak that tag, then this entire system falls apart. Now, this is where the tic tag paper gets really, really interesting. Now, what they do is they use this thing called speculative execution. Now, we all want our computers to run as fast as possible, right? Ideally, our computers would run our programs, it would load and store all of our memory, and it would never take what is called a cache miss, where effectively, when it looks up a memory address, if the memory isn't there in cache, it has to go out to random access memory and load that into cache. Now that is very expensive. It causes the program to slow down. So there has been this push to do this thing called speculative execution, where your CPU will actually run the instructions that are ahead of the current program counter. It will go into the future and predict what path you're gonna go down and try to preload that memory address to put it into cache so that when you actually get there, you don't miss the cache. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, there have been a variety of memory corruption attacks or leaks uh, that have come out of speculative execution. And spoiler alert, this is how the MTE leak works. Now I'm gonna zoom in here to their graphic. I wanna highlight this because this is really, really interesting. So the way that it works is they create a guess pointer and a test pointer that both live within the same 16 byte block so that they have the same memory tag. Now they create an area of speculative execution that will go out and try to dereference the guess pointer and dereference the test pointer. Now notice they don't actually ever go and run this code. All they do is they put it into the code in a way that it could conditionally execute. But the problem here is that if the tag mismatches, right, the whole point of memory tagging is that if the tag mismatches, it crashes a CPU. If it mismatches in a speculative case, if it mismatches matches in the future, it will not crash the CPU. And even so, if it mismatches, it won't cache. It won't go into cache. The test pointer will not be uh, cache filled and therefore the guess is wrong. So what they're able to do, they're able to time, did we already cache fill this test pointer and use that to figure out if the tag that they guessed was correct. So what they do is they iterate, is tag one correct? is tag two correct? And they keep checking over and over again until their access to test pointer is now filled in cache. Therefore, they're able to leak the tag of the target address and use that for a future memory corruption attack. Like when I read this paper, not only are they doing cache side channel leaking, they are doing it in speculative execution to bypass a hardware memory protection. Dude, it is just one of the craziest bugs. And to make it even more crazy, what they figured out how to do is they're able to do this attack inside of the V8 sandbox. So what the, the entire structure here is they create these things called tick tag gadgets. Now this, this graphic that I just showed you is called a tick tag gadget template. So basically if you can find a piece of code that does this sort of thing where you have address you wanna leak, address you control, speculative branch, and then you can check at the end of it, you've created what is called a, uh, a gadget template. So if you can look for snippets of code that are like this, you can find ways to leak the MTE in other code. And these researchers actually found a bunch of tick tag leak gadgets in the V8 VM, which as I've said in previous videos, is the VM that they use to run the JavaScript sandbox, right? And they're, they're showing you here in this paper, and again, I'm not gonna pretend that like I know how all this works, it's very, very complicated, uh, that they found tic tag V2 gadgets that can work inside the V8 sandbox to leak ARM V8 tags. So, like, I, I just cannot emphasize how crazy 
this paper is. I, I really, please go, go, go show them some love. Go, go read it. I hope I made this more accessible to you guys. Um, and if you like this video, do me a favor, hit like it, subscribe, then go check out this other, this video that you will also t like as well.